It was a witch that gave me the double concussion that made me start hearing songs in the first place. A couple years ago, this old witch drove her car into me as I raced to a summer job on my bike. She wasn't a bad witch necessarily, but she wasn't a good witch either. I remember her blank face over the steering wheel about to plow into me like she was on a mission. I pedaled as fast as I could, trying to escape her speeding Chevy, but I never made it to work that day. Instead, I flew up into the air. One minute, everything was like it usually is, and the next, I was flying. Flying through the air in vivid, slow motion, thinking, so this is what this feels like. As the pavement came toward me, time stopped abruptly. I hovered over the street. Tree branches blew in the breeze. I could smell cut grass. Somehow, I hung between flying up and falling down. A thought occurred. You're about to hit your head harder than you've ever hit it before, so maybe you should, you know, go limp. I did. As soon as I relaxed my muscles, time sped up and the ground jumped up in the air, crashing into my head. I slid down the street on my face for a while, then flipped over. My neck snapped back and my legs twisted up underneath me. The witch and her Chevy were long gone. She hit and ran. I lay there on the street, feeling the brand new sensation of a lot of blood leaving my body, then tried to unfold myself. Lifting my left leg, I noticed that there was no longer a foot at the end of it. Suddenly, I was very, very thirsty. Blood spread across the ground in a deep red puddle, pouring into the sewer. I'd never seen blood pour into a sewer before. It looks really cool. Then a woman appeared from nowhere and leaned over me. She was wearing mirrored sunglasses. What I saw in her glasses was bizarre. I had no face. The front of my head was hamburger and blood with two blue eyes staring out. Even my hair was red with blood. It snaked out from under me, unrecognizable as hair. Medusa, I thought. Behind the woman's head and my monstrous reflection was a clear blue sky. When I turned away to look for my missing foot, the woman grabbed what used to be my face and turned it toward her. You were hit by a car! She spoke loudly and slowly, carefully articulating each word. You're going to be fine! Why is she talking to me like I don't speak English? I flashed on seventh grade health class where they taught us what to do in case we ever came upon an accident. We learned to tie tourniquets and perform CPR, how to recognize the symptoms of shock, and what happens to the person in the back seat if you keep a crowbar on the dashboard. They also taught us how to talk to the victim. You speak loudly and slowly, carefully articulating each word. You tell them what's wrong, and then you tell them they're going to be fine. You have a crowbar through the middle of your skull. You're going to be fine. A few more people joined the mirrored sunglasses lady, kneeling on the ground, looking concerned. I thought about asking them to help me look for my foot, but figured if I were them, I wouldn't want Hamburger talking to me, so I felt underneath my leg and found the foot myself. I was sticking it back on when I saw my mother's face floating in the clear blue sky. Ah, oh, geez, I'm dead. You're definitely dead if you get hit by a car and then see your mother's face floating in a clear blue sky. Wait, my mother isn't dead. I noticed her car parked by the side of the road. Hi, Mom, I said. She looked upset. What's wrong? I heard sirens as she started to cry. pinpoint the moment you closed your eyes and said yes to the flooding
like melting you shrugged off the clothes of your life and well i hope you remind me it's here I hope you remind me It's here At twice the speed Hungering For someone who left In half the time Fuzzy Fumbling, that thirst is gone. We're alone. A parking lot, please. Begging. 